What's going on, everybody? Ooh, this guy's awful close, man. He's awful close. He's awful close to that truck over there. I don't know why this doesn't pull up. I don't know why this doesn't pull up and, and get a better angle at it. Why do you want to keep going closer? Well, Gary Grabber, Skull, Trucker Seals, Mark, everybody, Alan, Harold, what's up, man? I don't know why he just doesn't pull forward and get a better uh, deal. What's up, Big Rich? James! Man, look at all the trucker James come up in here. Stacy Jeffries, what's up? John Spaniel. Well, we just gonna we just gonna tell everybody. Rolling Rad, what's up? How's uh how's everything going? How's your better half? I'm not gonna say your names on the air. How's your better half? Uh but they are Michiganders, right? Northern Michigan, anyway. So anyway, here here's what's going on, man. Don't forget. If you haven't ordered your Max Mount, go to MaxMount.com, use JL10 for the code, get $10 off, free shipping, same day. Uh, we're going to ship it out the same day to get the order. And it's got to be done before Christmas. So I'm trying to get them to extend that into next year, you know, for all the, you know, viewers and subscribers. Um, but, you know, I don't know if they'll extend it or not. But just in case you wanted that mount... $10 off, $10 off that mount is a pretty big percentage when you look at what they cost. And plus free shipping, right? Plus free shipping. And they, they come they come to your house quick, right? They show up pretty fast. Um, yeah, Chemo, how long did it take you to get that? What's up, Dougie Doug? Yeah, my, my good buddy from Pennsylvania, Doug Bouchard. We'll, we'll throw a plug out there, Doug, for your for the uh, family's business. Hummer's Meats, Hummer'sMeats.com, the best uh, the best meat you can find over on that side of the country, right? They got great they got great great smoked pork chops. Uh, their beef jerky is out of this world. It's good stuff too. Their beef sticks are really good. Go to Hummer'sMeats.com today, and, and they'll ship it anywhere, all over the place. Um, they got all kinds of meats on their website. Go there, check them out. And uh, you can't really order online. I think you got to call them. Did you, Dave? You got your Trucking Pro software? Yeah, uh, Chemo says he got that Max Mountain one day. One day at the Max Mountain. <laughs> Ace says he's got a ram out in 20 years i get one well i got two of them see i i got both right um i'm using both of those companies in my truck <clears throat> that's what i got now, i'm using for my phone right for my phone i got the uh, the max mount for my phone i got one for my tablet and so forth and so forth what's up dollar bill but i'll tell you what happened to me today I go pick this load up, and man, was it, it, it was a nightmare. I went to a place where my wife used to work for them, but it was the ground division, the ground division. So I go up into this uh, warehouse, and no one knew what I was supposed to get. I said, I'm supposed to get this right here. Oh, no, all we have is that over there. So I type into the broker. They say you're supposed to get 25 of these and two of these. I said, I'm supposed to get 25 of these and two of these. Says, well, then that's that stuff over there. Right? It's used books. It's these big bins of used books, right? And they're plastic bins, and they're double stacked, right? Double stacked on each other. So <clears throat> they go over there, and they start loading them. And these big... Uh, Gear grabber, you know what I'm talking about. They were the black, big plastic bins that they put auto parts in, right? Hey, Doug, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Merry Christmas to you, buddy. Tell your lovely wife we said hi. And man, that, his wife cooks the best. Them smoked pork chops were out of this world, man. Whew, let me tell you. 
Asparagus was good too, man. That, that was good too. Yeah, it's TK. TK will tell you. So anyway, we got, they were in these big things. So I, you know, they were putting them in two at a time, right? Two at a time in there. And I'm like, how much does that stuff weigh? Because it said 44,000. That's what, well, dude, you can't double stack those in just the first half of the trailer. So he started singling them. And a good thing he did because when he pulled the one out, one of the bins fell down through the other bin and there was books just falling out all over the place, right? Falling out all over the place. And, uh, you know, it, it was something else, right? So anyway, they were, they were falling out all over the place and the bins were actually broke. And I said, these, these two bo drop box bins, right? They were supposed to put the books in. Those were broke too. I mean, the, the doors were hanging off them. They, they were really bad. So I took pictures of everything, right? Snapped all these pictures and I sent them to the broker. They sent me back text. Hold on a minute. We're calling. We're calling so-and-so. We're calling so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, then the ground people got a call. He says, well, how do these guys know what this stuff looks like? <laughs> I took a picture, dude. I'm not going to be responsible for all this damaged stuff you guys are going to put on my trailer. Right? Right, Harold. Wasn't in perfect condition. So then they're ramming their forks into these plastic bins trying to lift this one up. I said, wait a minute, don't stick your forks through the plastic. You're going to, the, the thing is bust up enough. I said, hold on, let me go get a couple logistic straps. What are you going to do with those? I'm going to wrap them around that bin and I'm going to crank them and I'm going to tie it in a knot and I'm going to crank it down with the ratchet and I'll pull all those sides together so the books don't fall out. So I did that on the top one, and they were trying to lift it up, and they didn't know how to. So I told them how to lift it up and get it off that one, and I, I banded the other one with my other strap. They put that stuff in. Then after they get it all done, I said, where's my bill? Well, we don't know. We don't have no bills. Right? So I said, hold on a minute. Let me go out to my Truck and Pro software. That's another reason why I like Truck and Pro. Right, Gear Grabber, it does print a heck of a bill of lading, don't it? So let me go to my computer and my printer outside. I'll print up a bill of lading. So I I contacted the broker, so I'm printing up a bill of lading. And I get the bill of lading printed, and the, and the uh, broker finally calls me back. He says, ah, we're going to email you a bill of lading from the receiver because it's their stuff. I said, that's fine. Of course, when they sent it, it had all the wrong numbers on it. Didn't have 25 because I only got 21, so I had to cross that out and everything. Oh, long story short, you know, I got out of there. I don't deliver until 7 a.m. I'm already parked. I'm about 15 miles from the place. So I decided to, you know, tell all you guys out there my story today. So that way you know it just doesn't happen to you. It happens to everybody, right? Because you know how it is in trucking. If you've been out here long enough, you just think it always just happens to you. No, it happens to everybody. <laughs> it happens to everybody. <clears throat> yes, a big company with a protocol doesn't know how to operate. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, you know, they just didn't know how to they just didn't know how to do it, you know. They didn't know how to uh, do that. Oh, by the way, anybody watching this channel, as you can see, there's no more. This, this is straight trucking and informational. You come in here and you put anything up there that has derogatory remarks, um, swear words, such and such, you'll be banned right off the channel. That's the way the operation is going to work. And if you don't like it, go subscribe to somebody else. Because I am not up into how many subscribers I have. I don't care if I have one or a million. I'm only going to give out trucking information like I always have. Right? And I will help everybody that I can that gets a hold of me. And I've helped a lot of people. So that's what's happening. Right? I found light says, how about rider leasing? Well, th there's two things there. If you're going to lease a truck from Ryder, which is, it isn't bad to lease a truck from because it's full maintenance lease, right? Um, 
a lot of companies, if you put it on with certain companies, they won't let you put on a, a ride. They call those rental trucks for some reason. Um, they won't let you put those on. But if you had that for your own authority, there's nothing wrong with it. There's not one thing wrong with it. And don't let anybody tell you any different. What you got to do is you got to look at the numbers because Ryder does put together some pretty good numbers, right? They'll put some good numbers together. What's up, Weird Racing? You know what, Lenny? Lenny's a good friend of mine. I met Lenny. We, we, we broke bread together. Lenny, Lenny deserves a wrench. Lenny gets a wrench. And, and Lenny's a go-kart racer, and he knows how to use wrenches. So look out. Jonathan Smith. What's up, Jonathan? Man, I think I talked to you the, uh, a day or so ago, right? So uh, Jonathan says, got to have one year in business uh, for Ryder. Yeah, see, every every place has different, um, you know, different uh, criteria. And if you can rent a truck or lease a truck from them, like my dealership, right? If you live around there, I, I'm, I was hoping I could get them to expand it to at least the Midwest. And uh, 404 Trucker decided to step in, check it out. What's up? What's up, Jonathan? Uh, I know Jonathan's got a lot of things on his plate, man. He, he's doing it, though. Go check his channel out, man. He's doing it. He's getting her done. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, like my dealer. I wish they'd expand it, but, but they're, they're not right now. So... But we do have, there's a, a gentleman on here right now that just commented a little ways up the, the, the thing there. He's probably going to, they're probably going to get a truck for them, husband and wife. They're probably going to get a truck there. And I'm going to do all I can to help them to be able to get a truck. Um, I'll even go in there and, you know, tell them, hey, you know, you give them this truck. If they need help, I'll help them, right? So, you know, and with that dealership, that means a lot to them because they know my background, they know what I generate, and they know how, you know, the business runs. So, I'm willing to step up and help those folks out if they need that help. <clears throat> and, you know, I do it for anybody if, uh, if they really need it, you know. Yep, that's right, 18 wheels. You got it. So, you know, we're working on that. And, uh, yeah, gear grabber. I mean, they're a nice couple. You know, they live right up there. You know, the next county over, so they're okay in that, in that you know, perspective. Um, they also called our trailer guys that we use. And they're going to they're gonna give them a trailer. Right, so that's cool. So they're they're there, man. They're really there. They, they're just you know hanging out, and they're gonna they're gonna do that when it's time comes for them to do that, right? So um, I'm gonna go in there and talk to uh, Keith and uh, see if I really have to jump through uh, a lot of hoops to you know to help them out, or if we can, you know, if I say hey, if they need help, I'll help them along the way. Do we really have to do this, this, and this? Because, you know, the less we can put on ourselves, you know, for me and them to do, the better, right? If you can get it done with less work, that's more efficient. So I'm going to go talk to them, and uh, we're going we're gonna to get that worked out. But, because Gear Grabber knows, so uh, this place likes to have business plans, right, Gear Grabber? They like to have business plans. So... Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to work it out to where we don't have to do a business plan. Because if we don't have to do a, you know, when I walk in and say, you know, I'll be their business plan. I'll help them out. If it's if it saves us from having to get on the computers and type up, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 page business plans and doing all the uh, perspectives and all that stuff that goes along with business plans. Um, you know, if we don't have to do that, that saves a whole lot of work and headache. But if that has to be done, then, then, you know, I'll help them and we'll get that step done, right? That's what'll happen. So, you know, it's the way it goes. 
Um, anyway, like we said, nothing's happening on this channel, right? If you're a controversial YouTuber, you're not allowed on this channel. How do you like that? Yeah, Anthony, I'm keeping all my videos up now because John Spaniel says, Gear Grabber says he's feisty, and John Spaniel says, uh, quick on the draw, Gear Grabber. Alan loves it. There we go, thumbs up. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you know, Gear Grabber, we, we talked, and he knows what's going on and, and all that good stuff. So, and I, you know, I talked to Harold too on the phone today and I told Harold what was going on. Jay Cole, Jay Cole says, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jay. Well, Merry Christmas to all my viewers and everybody out there watching the video. Hope you all have a, you know, really happy holiday season. Enjoy it, you know, and, and all that good stuff. Anthony T says, oh, I came in just now and I missed some stuff. You didn't miss nothing, Anthony. We're just talking nothing but trucking and trucking info. That's what this channel was from the beginning. That's the way it's always been. I really haven't strayed from it from day one. All I did is come out here and say, you know, there's none of that other stuff going on in this channel. And anybody that plays with that stuff or controversial or anything will be banned right on out. That's all. Harold says... Uh, J3FF, yeah, that's like a gamer, right? See, see, Harold, you know, I used to, you know, I'm a video gamer, right? I, I knew what you meant there with that backwards three. You know, that's, a, that's really an E, but it's backwards. So, Jeff, you know, we all came here and found you, not the drama, but for the wealth of knowledge, glad to help you keep the drama locked so you can continue with the knowledge. Right, exactly. <clears throat> and me and Harold were talking on the phone, and, and uh, we were talking about how many people I helped in this industry. And it's it's a it's a lot. In two years, it's incredible the amount of people. And uh, that's why I do it. And you know, I thought about taking the channel down at one time, but then I said, nope, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep up the work of really, really helping the people out, right? Really helping the people out. So that's what we do here. And there's probably 15 or 20 people on this live feed that I've helped out in the last two years. Right? Yeah, nobody put your number out here. Um, if you want if you want me to call you or something and, and, and talk about stuff or whatever, um, you know, you can go to my website. You can leave an email. Put your phone number there. Because my email, you know, if you click on contact and send the email, I'll get it. Um... I filter through a lot of them, so the ones that talk to me don't leave a number. You know, I don't have time to really, uh, when I get time, I write back to some of those folks. I read them, but the, the ones that need the help urgently, right away, those are the ones I contact first. So, there you go. And, you know, if you, if you want to ask people, you know, there's a lot of people on here I've talked to. TK, I've talked to him, helped him out, you know, um, when he was looking to do something. Um, Harold, I talked to Harold. Uh, you know, me and Lance have talked before a lot, 404 Trucker. We've talked, Russ Maynard, we, you know, we talked. I just go down the list, you know, of all these guys. Um, of course, we are Grayson, you know, can't can't forget him. Pale Rider, we, we really didn't really talk about him. We ate. We ate, we ate, didn't we, Pale Rider? We were eating. But, uh, but, but see, we were at the TA at that time, man. We should have been at Arlene's. We should have drove those trucks to Arlene's, Pale Rider. That's what we should have did. Talked to Alan. Talked to Alan a lot, you know, on the phone. Um, old Mark, Trucker Seals. Other Trucker, James Bess. Man, me and James had a lot of conversations lately because, you know, he's out looking at trucks and... And uh, thinking about, you know, the Schneider deal and everything. And we talked uh, quite a bit. 
about a lot of in-depth things about the trucking industry. And hopefully, you know, I helped him out and he gained some knowledge and, and things like that of, of something maybe he didn't know. But, uh, John, you know, I talked to Jonathan on the phone. And of course, Doug, right? My good friend Doug out there in Pennsylvania. I helped Doug out quite a bit. And he'll tell you right on the air I helped him out. And uh, he's doing really well in his new endeavor. I mean, he's probably loving it. Loving the heck out of what he's doing now. Right? Oh, gee, Daddy Whack. Hey, man, how's your... Now, this is on, this is on a personal note here. Hey, man, how, how you doing, buddy? You know, seriously, how you doing? Because, you know, we got those pictures. We've been worried about you. Make sure you're, you know, you're out of the hospital. You're able to be home for Christmas. Um, you doing all right? Because I'm interested to get back out on the road. I can't stand it. A golf course or the truck. Well, here you go, G Daddy. Check it out, man. Check it out. You take your phone. You download. You download golf games right WPT or WTP whatever that golf game is you'll love it download that right download that man play all the courses all over the world be just like you haven't missed it and you can even gee daddy you can even take out monster divots <laughs> You can even take out monster divots in the grass. <laughs> oh, I just just had to put that out there, G Daddy. You know. But yeah, play golf. Play golf on the uh on that. Or, you know, he probably got it in his house. He's probably got a big old Xbox or PlayStation sitting there, right? Playing golf on that. Um But I was gonna go back up here through these names and uh, talk about the ones that uh, you know that I, I recognize really good um, Sean talk to Sean uh, rolling red right so <clears throat> that's about all we're doing we're going to deliver this load in the morning now, picking up another load, going back to Michigan. And get this gear grabber, right? Get this gear grabber. You know that company you never um, look at loads from anymore? I looked at them, right? I looked at them. Hey, don't give out the secret location of the Arlene's truck stop. How are we going to get in there at 3 in the morning when, when Tarjay doesn't want to unload us? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, well, I get on that website, you know, I get on their app, and they have a load picking up right down the street, you know, 10 miles to the next town, right? Going up to uh, Michigan. 130 miles, something like that. And they got, you know, I sent them the, the text, or I sent them an email, right? What do you think they came back at, at 130 miles? You're going to guess it. Go ahead and throw it up there. Get you know, take take the shot. What, what what's their common response to short mile loads? 130 miles. We'll see if Gear Grabber can guess it right off the bat. Rolling Red says, "Hey, G Daddy, how do you like your Stoughton trailer?" Yeah, yeah, G Daddy. Rolling Red, looking at you, looking at some Stoughtons. Uh, no, Gear Grabber, 400 bucks, right? 400 was their. Um, What's their deal? Um, take his wrench. Take whose wrench? I don't. It was four hundred dollars, right? So no, Stacy, you're too high. It was four hundred bucks. So I sent him back an email. Well, it doesn't deliver until the next day. So, you know. I got a whole my trucks involved in it for a whole day and then some 
So I would not be interested for a, not a penny less than 700 And I left it at that because I figured, hey, they're not going to do nothing, right? Dude, it wasn't, it wasn't even five seconds after I sent that email, it seemed like. They sent me one back saying, who's the driver? I'll send over the rate sheet. Can you believe that? I should have went to 1000 for that 130 miles, right? But I was happy with that price if I'd have got it, you know, because it's only two hour run, you know. 404 says 1500. Well, that company 404, they they wouldn't even they wouldn't even attain that. They wouldn't even respond back to you. Um So, there you go. Well, who's the driver is because we have two trucks. So that's why they ask who the driver is. Because on the app, all your drivers are listed. So if you have 10 drivers, or you know, 10 independent contractors, whatever you have, they're all listed in there. So they know who to send the load to, you know, <clears throat> for their app. So they can do their check calls. I see now why SCNN puts the extra sidewall heat and extended steel plate in the back of the doors. Pretty pretty flimsy or what, gee daddy, what, what's going on with it? Um plate trailer, those ship those shippers and receivers bang it up pretty good. Oh yeah, see well you know why that is. See the the plate trailers they're really really thin walls. So they mm -hmm. put that steel in them, right? They're really thin walls because if you if you want to tell the difference in a plate trailer if you didn't say plate on the on it is when they're going down the road look at a Schneider trailer that side wall of the trailer is doing this just like this going on the road so it's going to mess up your aerodynamics of course going like this a regular trailer that's not a plate trailer it won't move you can look down there at 70 mile an hour and that side wall is not doing this it's straight as an arrow um, and the reason why is a plate trailer is 100 to 102 inches wide inside width. Pretty thin wall because the other ones are 100 and a half. You know, you wouldn't think that uh, half inch or one and a half inches between two walls is a lot. It is when it comes to stability. Um, but that's why. They, that's why some shippers only haul, only load plate traders because they need that 100 or 102 inch inside width. They need that 101 inch. Because I hauled the um, racks for uh, Ball Corporation, which makes a lot of um, cans. Well, the racks, they couldn't put side by side in my trailer because they need 101 and I had 100 and a half. So what they did is they staggered them I was just taking back empty racks. Um, but when you're hauling for them and they're full of cans, they have to be able to go in there. And that's why they bang out your sidewalls, G-Daddies, because the racks are so close together, they're scraping your walls to get them side by side in there. Right? Your scuff plates and everything. They, they, need, they need every millimeter they can get. Thus, those loads usually pay more. Same thing with the insulation. Um they pay really well but you take your trailer takes a lot of abuse right G daddy they don't look new anymore does it buddy <laughs> it doesn't look new anymore I'll guarantee the inside of their trailers don't look new anymore they probably looking pretty rough scratched all the pieces right look at him he's crying Oh, he's not crying yet. He ain't got he ain't got his big enough scratches on the side of him yet for him to start crying. Oh, but you know you could probably for a few thousand dollars replace some of those steel panels. <laughs> Don't worry, G Daddy, it's only money, man. You can replace them if you find a nice pretty trailer. Wait till wait till they take something and dig your floor up, right? You know, they take a a pallet or something that had a bolt in it and they just take a big gouge in your in your wood floor and just rip it all the way up no jonathan you know the only you'll see the plate trailers wanted in the um empty can arena right um in the insulation business those are the only two really that i've seen that required plate trailers there's plenty of freight out there and you can still make 
just as much money as some of those, but you got to find the right loads. But I looked at some of those insulation loads and seeing where they went, and some of them are job sites, and then some of them are, you know, backwoods barns where, you know, the people have an insulation business, and they get a whole truckload, you know, all kinds of good places, right? This guy's going to try to back up. Anybody want to see this? From Iowa City, it is the Heartland. He's going to try to get that swing. Ooh, the truck the truck driver almost got ran over. He's trying to walk behind him. Dude, you don't walk behind a truck backing up. He should be out there a little bit, a little bit, you know, better there, but he's not. He should have took a little better angle. He's going in pretty. He's going in at a pretty uh, sharp angle there. Anyway. We're going to end this video here in a, in a few minutes. <clears throat> We're going to go in here, grab a shower, because they have some showers open. And, you know, this is a small, small pilot. <clears throat> Harold says, I did an insulation load from the town just both uh, of Indy. Went to two stores in Illinois. It was pretty good pay. Yeah, see, that's what GDA hauls, right? He hauls that stuff. Use his NOF insulation, um, the NOF boys. And then you got, you know the cans and things like that but uh yeah those loads pay good and schneider's in those places right they're in there because you see the orange trailers everywhere i mean that, that's what cracks up about these companies they, they just say oh we don't want you to know who our shippers are but you see them everywhere i mean you're driving down the road and look over there and whoa there's five swift trailers eight schneiders and you know a couple of uh even these heartland boys you know went to home depot competitors who are in the midwest for <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Pale Rider, why do you want to say that about, about Heartland Express? Come on now. Let, let's be nice, Pale Rider. I, I know you're getting a little froggy there. But I'll tell you what. If you be nice, Pale Rider, I'll buy you dinner at Arlene's when we meet up in the summer. Because you, you won't come up here in the winter. Um, but, you know, in the summertime, I'll... uh. If, you, if you're up there and I'm at Arlene's, I'll buy you dinner. How's that? But it's, it's got to be on a Thursday. And me and Gear Guard was tired of this garbage. We, we're never getting there on a Thursday. And pot roast, pot roast dinner at Arlene's on a Thursday is unbelievable, my friends. Unbelievable. I'm telling you. You get like a whole pot roast just for yourself. It's about that thick, right? About two inches thick or so. And it's a big slab of it. Takes up almost the whole plate. And then they give you, you know, all your potatoes and your carrots and all that stuff with pot roast, right? On the side, along with a soup or salad, along with cornbread or muffins or bread or whatever you want. And so on. And I mean, it, you can't eat but half of it. And you got to take the other half and put it in your refrigerator. It's just way too much food. But it's, it's cheap. You know, it's less than 10 bucks. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. He, he's still trying. He is still trying, folks. Well, now he's now he's at the, the other truck. He's yelling out his window at the driver that, that's parked there. Look, he's yelling out the window. So I don't know. I think he's telling the guy to pull out so he can back in. I think he's saying, pull your truck out so I can back into this hole. They are backed up on special order four to six months. His uh, G Daddy's a 2018 Stoughton. I'll tell you the name so anybody that doesn't know G Daddy, you're giving vague information. So I'll, I'll, I'll help you out here, buddy. Don't laugh too much. I don't want you to fall out of your bed and hurt your leg. I don't. I don't need your wife mad at me because you can't drive the truck anymore. So I'm gonna say this like it is. They're backed up. He's got a 2018 Stoughton. But the new ones will be more money because of the regulations. That's true. Everything's going up. Outlaw Trucker says it was 50 up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan the day, Outlaw Trucker. I was there all day. I was in Zeeland first. I was in Grand Rapids second. Actually, I was up there by Walker, the top part, right? The top part. I ran right up 11. 
shot across Wilson Road, went over there to the uh, ground facility, and uh, got loaded and got out of there. So unloaded today, got loaded, and I um, that might be the same guy, the Heartland guy, because there was one where I unloaded, right? I pull in, and he was he was so worried I was going to cut in front of him, right? They had three docks there. I get out of my truck, and he bolts across the parking lot to the main door. And I walk up to the receiving door. I'm ringing the bell. No one's answering. It was 745. The sign said 730. He comes back and gets in his truck, and he almost takes out my hood, going around me, and starts backing the dock. I'm like, what's the hurry for? So I go inside, and I walk around, go inside, and they haven't really started work yet. They're all sitting up in the office. Well, yeah, it's back in any of those docks that are open. Okay, so I back in. They unload him first, right, because he was there first. No big deal. But what cracked me up was this. What do you think he did when he got unloaded? Anybody guess what he did when he got unloaded? He was so much in a hurry to do. Anybody guess? No one can guess. Outlaw picked up at Founders Brewery. Really? I picked up there. That's the old rail terminal. I picked up there uh, last month. Harold says he pulled out and uh, sat. Waiting for dispatch. Exactly, Harold. Exactly. He didn't go anywhere. Exactly. All that hustle and trying to tear my truck up. Yeah, right? So I go in there. I finally get unloaded. I pull out, close my doors, and I leave. And he's still sitting there waiting for dispatch. Because I already had another load to pick up. I was done and gone, right? Psh, psh, gone. And uh, that's what I'm saying. Why, why, get, why get so much in a hurry? I, I don't get it. If, you don't, if you're a company guy especially, you don't have another load. Why get in a hurry and, and you know, put yourself in risk of... Uh, Tearing equipment up and everything. You know? This doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> but, you know, I could see if he had somewhere to go. Right? If he had somewhere to go and had to be somewhere by, let's say, 9 o'clock, you know, pick up another load, or he'd be stuck there. You know, it might be a little different story. You know? But. <laughs> Harold says that's him over there. They sent his next load. He can pick it up tomorrow morning. Yeah, you're probably right. He probably deadheaded all the way back down here where I'm at. He's probably picking up right here because this is a big shipping town, uh, 130 miles south of uh, Grand Rapids, 120 miles south of Grand Rapids. So, yeah, you're right. He's probably sitting here waiting to pick up in the morning. I wouldn't doubt it. Would not doubt it at all. So that means he sat up there until 1 o'clock, right? Sat in that parking lot from 9 to 1, 8 to 1, whatever it was. And then, you know, he's probably deadheaded down here to pick a load up in the morning. Uh, old Lance, hurry up and wait. Boogeyman! What's up, Boogeyman? You are late. 18 Wheels to Welt says, uh, what board and or broker have you pulled the most loads from? Well, let me see. Um, I don't need this. Anybody got this new iPhone? Look at this. I don't know how to get that off there. But now it's got a thing on there for old people. It's got a magnifying viewing area that you can move around so it makes everything really, really big. I don't need that. How do you get that off of there? Zoom out, zoom, whatever, whatever. Um... Not now. You can even enable it to where it'll do whatever you want. I don't get it, man. Uh, I'm not that old. I don't need the zoom feature, a magnifying glass to see. I can still see. Uh, I'm not that old yet. But that's why I like Thunder Funding, right? I'll go right to my, my uh, app, to the site right there. I'll type in my stuff. And... They got a nice little pie chart and everything for you that tells you.
Man, I gotta get this thing off here. I, I don't. This is this is you're driving me crazy. Driving me crazy. Um. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. We gotta get back to business. I'll tell you here in a second about. Okay, here it is. Here's the chart. Um. Now this is in this month, right? 44% others. That means there's a whole lot of others in there. 44% others. 21% coyote. 10% US, 10% uh, fifth wheel, 7% England but 44% other. Now I can look on the other and then it'll give me a big list of the other. I can see what those are um, and so forth. And it also tells me the current balance amount for all of those uh, people. Year to date's everything, right? So it, it gives you everything you wanna know. But I don't know how to get this stupid thing off of there. So what I'll probably do is um re you know turn the phone off and back on which these don't have an off button like the uh no we don't have an emergency stupid phone so anyway that's that enough of that but that's that's a lot of different brokers you know no need to chase the stuff no what I did is um I did a personal phone for just family and it that's all it's for Yeah, did you hear it going off the emergency? Whoop, 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 whoop. I'll have them come in here with sirens, baby. Yep. And when they show up, I'll give them some uh, beef jerky stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'll do. But, uh... Yeah, and see, if someone gets their own authority and they want to know, like, the initial brokers that they can haul for and everything, I got a nice list. And, you know, I'll send that list to you. Right? I'll send that list to you and so forth. Um, that's what I'll do. Well, yeah, see, my other phone that I use for everything, that was really getting tied up with um, brokers and, you know, and uh, people get contacting me for help and, and things like that. So I use that phone for that. And that way, if, if there is a family emergency or something, they can call me on this other phone, and I know if that phone rings, pick it up. You know? So at nighttime, I can turn this phone off so I don't get those calls all during the night. Turn this phone off. And, uh, of course, I could use the uh, feature gear grabber. Told me about the... Um, sleep mode or whatever do not disturb mode and you can just put in phone numbers that you want to be able to get through oh uh, but you know the way the way my wife is she's well if you're buying me a new phone why don't you get a new phone okay you know i'll get one i'll just have two i guess but it does work out really well if you do a call-in show right if you do a call-in show it works out good if you have two phones people can hear you really really well um, what's this guy doing? That's a cool outfit. Check this out, guys. Look what this guy did to his, um, international. Check that out. He made it into a little tow truck. Check that out. Well, he hauls them trailers, too. Like, one trailer at a time or so. He's got that ball hitch. Pull it right up on there. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That's a cool setup. Yeah, he's a camper hauler. Yeah. Puts one on top, 
It hauls another one in the back, right? Gotta go if we don't catch another live feed and family have it. Okay, thanks, Rick. You guys have a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all that good stuff. Rich is gonna get a little flip phone for brokers. There you go. Snore Lordio. What's up, Bandit? What you doing, buddy? All right. FMCSA must have heard you taking or talking about PC. They're changing things. Yeah, yeah, Freight Shaker Gary. Dan has a wrench. He sure does. Dan Schmidt. Look at that wrench Dan has. He got a big wrench. Yeah, Lance, they do a lot of RVing, right? Man, anybody that lives in northern Indiana in a pole barn, right? They uh, they do some serious building in those pole barns. And everything from uh, small little trailers on up to big mobile homes and everything. Saw that on JJ Keller's site about PC. Um, Rico says, you still trading stocks? I've been out of stocks for a while. I thought about getting back into the day trading uh, business of it. I've done that for quite a while, day trading. And it's like an addiction when you start doing that. You know, it's, it's kind of like playing video games, right? It's fun. You watch the you watch the stock. You know, you do the stock charts and everything. And you sit there and watch the live feeds, and you see them all going up and down, and and you're trading basically on, you know, penny movements, right? When you when you start trading, you know, big volumes of stocks, and uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty fun. It's also nerve wracking, right? Right, John Spaniel? John Spaniel's been trading like a madman. When you day trade, um, yeah, it can be pretty nerve-wracking, too. you got to kind of have nerves of steel, man. And way back when, right, when I used to day trade, I read a lot of books. And I always remember the one books, the, these one series I read. I read Wade Cook. Anybody knows Wade Cook? He did a lot of books. He did books like on trading by the Bible type things. Um... And so forth, a lot of other different uh, stock trading books. But I'll, write, I'll never forget the one quote that he said in those books, right? Because I have a lot of people ask me, hey, man, um, how do you day trade or how do you trade these stocks? How do you look, how do you look at charts and all this stuff? Because there's, there's all different kinds of words for this stuff, <clears throat> right? You can have rolling stocks. If you want to trade regular stocks, you can have rolling stocks. If you want to do options, you know, you got leaps, straddles covered calls you know all this stuff right short short trade and all this stuff short sale so this is what really stuck with me you know you're ready to trade or day trade with whatever money you have whether it be 10 grand 50 grand 100 grand 5 grand whatever it is and you can and you can walk up to the side of that cliff and just let the money go then you're ready to trade stocks. Think about it, fellas. If you want to invest 50 grand in the stock market, if you can walk up to a cliff and just dump the 50 grand over the cliff and walk away, you're ready to day trade. Other than that, don't day trade. Because you can win some and you can lose some or a lot, depending on how you do it. Options, you can lose a whole lot more in options than you can buying and selling uh you know stocks as a day trader because if you don't sell it and it goes way down and you don't sell it and you hold it you might have to hold it for quite a while to get your money back but you still haven't lost it yet now with options it's a little different because you know you have uh, time frames you got time frames lance now there see now lance thinking Lance is thinking, when all you guys go to that cliff and, and let go of that money, he's going to be at the bottom collecting it all. <laughs> Lance, there you go, man. 
All right, we're out of here, fellas, guys and gals. I know there's like 100 people up in here. Um, we gave out some information. Uh, you know, there's other things coming down the line eventually. I've talked about those. Uh, I will still keep the YouTube channel going. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try to grow this trucking company. Um, I'm, I'm going to check other insurance companies. Because there's got to be one out there. That if you put the right amount of money up, they'll let you grow as fast as you want. There's got to be one out there. I'm going to go find it. So, that's what we're going to look into come the first of the year. Music Trucker, A.K. Bennett, you're struggling to grow your company. Exactly. People don't understand it. If they don't have their authority dealing with these insurance companies, they really don't know how hard it is for them to let you expand. Yeah, if you have four or five years of authority in, yeah, you can expand really, really well. You know, really, really well. See, Ira Lawrence, he's the same way. He's looking for a new insurance company, too. It's just the nature of the beast, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I, I'm pretty sure, you know, you're pretty stuck growing kind of slow for the first two or three years. Uh, that's probably the way it is. And the ones that um, got to grow faster, they found the right insurance company, right? Still waiting for your truck to get back. Oh, from that uh, mishap? Is it still in the shop? I'm leased on and I'm running on deaf ears when it comes to high paying loads. <laughs> <coughs> you saw the price and now they want to run. Yep. That'll happen. That will happen. Because these trucks aren't cheap to fix. <clears throat> For instance, and Lance knows, Lance has been there, Gear Grabber knows. A lot of people in Michigan know. When I had the Volvo 880, I parked on a Sunday morning at the Pilot in Battle Creek, Michigan. And I thought I was safe, right? I thought I was safe. I was parked in the row behind the fuel island. So it's a straight back. And when you pull out, it's a straight pull out through the fuel island and out on the road. Well, there was a flatbed park next to me, you know, with stuff hanging out the back and everything. <coughs> and I was a, <coughs> and I was a bobtail. And I was parked back in there. And I went and take a shower. <clears throat> right, Lance. But, you know, I was the four spot up, right? Four spot. You know, from the building. I was the four spot up, right? Straight back, right? On those spots. I went and take a shower, come out. As soon as I opened the door up and started walking out, I goes, man, something don't look right. Something really don't look right. There's parts all over the place. I get to my truck, hood's all messed up, tore to pieces, <clears throat> driver's mirrors tore to pieces. Well, the flat guy pulled out, but he turned, and all the swing caught the whole thing, just ripped it all to pieces. But of course, no one's seen a thing, right? No one's seen a thing. So that's also when I learned that that truck is not the one to have anymore because they don't make it anymore. And when I took it to the dealers to get it uh, next to the dealer's or a repair shop to get it fixed, they said, oh yeah, we can fix it, but there's a problem. What's that? There's not a hood in Canada or in the United States nowhere to be found, not even a used one. So they had to call the manufacturer of the hoods, have them bring the mold out, redo some hoods, Long story short, over a month later, I finally get my truck out of the shop over a month. The hood was 15 grand, 15 grand for a hood. 
what it costs. <laughs> so <clears throat> there you go. 15 grand for all that. And over a month out of work. And uh, then I decided it's time to start getting rid of this truck. Well, then everything started going wrong with it again. And the crossover Y pipe on the dual stacks went bad. And that was 2,000 bucks for that little three foot of pipe. Two grand for that pipe. And I asked them, why so much money for all this stuff? And they said, well, it's a Cadillac truck, Cadillac price, because they don't make it no more, and the parts are in, um, they don't have any parts. They're hard to find. So when they when they have them, they're high dollar. So then it wasn't about a couple months later, I took it to the dealer and sold it. Sold! And said, so, well, I'm going to go get trucks that um, all the companies have. That way there's always parts and it's cheaper to fix, right? Better for the bottom line. Yep. See, that's the stuff that, you know, I I say on the channel and let everybody know. Because I've been there. I've done it. I've went through the, uh, the, the agony and the money, you know, fixing these trucks. JK, just go to my website, lighttrucking.com, and fill out the little contact form and, and send it. Yeah, Boogie Man, KW loves their parts too. Just ask Lance. Lance, doesn't KW love their parts? <laughs> he buys a lot of parts, right? He's got a he got an old W900 there. He knows how much parts are. <clears throat> Come on, Lance. <clears throat> Lance knows. KW loves their parts also. They love it. All right, man, we're, I'm out of here. We're almost 60 minutes. This is too long a video. I'm going to go in here. Well, there was two showers out of five left open, but there are probably, they're probably none left open now, but we're going to see. All right. We'll see you all later. And uh, Doug, if you're still on here, Thanks for the super chat, Doug. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all the subscribers out there. Everybody watch the channel. And I'll probably do another live video some other time here. Maybe before uh, the Christmas holiday. Right? And Lenny, if I get back over to your area before then, maybe we can go out to dinner again or something. What do you think of that, buddy? Yes, no, maybe so. All right. If I get down to that area, I'll, I'll be giving you a call. We'll see you.